Hi everyone, Code Queen Ayeli. I'm going to show you how to download a document from a database where you've uploaded and selected it through your Wix Media Manager and then auto trigger a save window to appear because this will actually allow for us to hide the URL where the document is being hosted. That's right, no more Wix static dot 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 something. <laughs> No more right clicking, just one click to trigger. Now let me show you what that looks like. So here's the tutorial site. Let me show you two different ways on how I accomplish this. The first one, I connect it to a table. This table has a list of documents that you can scroll through. It has a title, description, and the last date that the document was updated. So if you scroll down through the table and you click on one, It'll auto trigger the pop up window here and it'll include the name of the document title that I inserted into the database. I can cancel that. If I click on another one, document 10, then the next one comes up. So they can do this as many times as they want. Or, of course, you can manipulate the code a little bit and as soon as they choose one, then the table hides and they can't choose anymore. Now let's move down to the second one that I accomplished. This one, I created a repeater and I used the label from the database to save as the name. Now I did something in this repeater. Um, you'll see two buttons. These buttons are actually supposed to be layered on top of each other, but because I wanted to show you what happens and what the difference is, I separated the buttons so that way you can see both. The home page of the tutorial site and when I click on this link, the Wix link, it takes me directly to the document and of course it shows the popular docs.wixstatic.com dot 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 stuff. We don't want that, that's what we're trying to prevent. What we did here is we connected it to a secondary button that triggers the code and it grabs this link that is saved in this button and it chops it up into little pieces, puts them in a different order, and then we get, voila, the pop-up window to save the document. This one is test document nine. Now I set it up as if it were maybe a, a booklet, a brochure, anything like that. I added a picture just to have an image there and um, the title of the document and the buttons. Let's move on to the next one. So in this repeater, I've triggered the download, but instead of using the label that I entered manually into the database, I actually just want to use the original label that the document had when I uploaded it into the Wix Media Manager. Here, you see the image, the name of the document, and the download button. So if I click on any of these, Nayeli rocks. <laughs> so that's the name that I actually labeled it inside of the Wix Media Manager. Ready for me to show you how I did this? Okay, but before I do, please subscribe. You'll get notified when I release another video, and the more subscribers I get, then the more I know that my videos are actually helping you, so that way it inspires me to create more for you. So click subscribe. Now that you've subscribed, click on the video description, find the tutorial link, and join me on the tutorial site so we can go over the code. This is what the code looks like. Right now, you're viewing the code for all three pieces of the example that I showed you. It has a label on each one. This is for the repeater download with the name from a database label. This is the one for the repeater download with the name from the Wix dashboard media manager. And this is the one for a table download with the name from database label. So there's probably many, many more ways of accomplishing this, but I have three different examples here so you can look through the code, pick through the code, and change it the way that you need it to accomplish whatever it is that you need on your website. If you need to delete any pieces, make sure you delete the entire code that belongs to that section. This is for the first one, this is for the second one, and so on. But if you leave it there, it's okay, it's not gonna do anything. It won't be connected. Let's go over the code so you know what pieces to change. 
So in this code, we're using the Wix Data API because we're going to be retrieving and calling information that is saved on our database. And we're going to be using Wix Location because we are using a URL to go somewhere. The onReady function, I have it blank, but you can add information there if you need it. The first code is for the repeater download with a name from the database label. This is triggered on a button click. It isn't a repeater. There is a button and that button has the properties panel on click event activated. I have let repeater data equals dollar sign w repeater one data. If you notice the way that I wrote it, it is a little bit different than you've seen it before. That's because Wix code is updating and they're making some changes on how to write the code. So note that I, instead of having dollar sign w, I have dollar sign and then repeater data. This is my word from up here. And then it's a dollar sign w dot at event dot context. This is where we're going to use to let my page know that I'm trying to retrieve information from that one specific item inside of my repeater. I'm going to add another variable. I'm going to call it source. So I'll put let source equal the repeater data hashtag link source link. Link source is what I labeled my second button, which I connected directly to the document itself. You saw me click on it and it went directly to the Wix static URL. That is where I'm trying to retrieve that URL and I'm gonna label it source. From there, I'm also gonna add another variable. I'm gonna call it name. Name will be the doc name dot text this is a text element that I added inside of the repeater connected to the title inside of the database. Moving down, we have URL. It's another variable that I added, so I put let URL equal the source dot split. I'm splitting the URL that I retrieved from here. This is the source. I grab the URL split it. I'm going to get the third position of that information. I'm going to take it because that's what I'm going to be using and it will be now called the URL. This is the piece that I need to insert into this pattern. This is the pattern that allows the auto trigger to happen. We're going to add the URL variable here, question mark dn equals, and then the name of the document. Let's go down to the second one. So this one is going to be triggered the same. They're going to click on a button. So that button has the on click event inside of the properties panel. So make sure you turn that on. Then we're going to get the repeater data once again. Of course, this is a different repeater. So in my label, I have repeater two. Then that one specific item in the repeater, I'm going to grab the source, let source equal the repeater data link B. This is just a second button that I have hidden behind the download button. I'm going to grab that source. Here's the source. Then I'm going to split it. I'm going to get position four and position three from the same source. I'm splitting that URL. Number four is actually the name of the document inside of the Wix dashboard media manager. So I'm going to get those two and then I'm going to use Wix location to send the person to this URL right here. I'm glad you have no questions so far. Let's move on to the very last piece of the code. Now on the table code, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to activate an on row select event inside of the properties panel. So click on your table on the properties panel turn on the row select. We're going to trigger a function called table download. Table download is just a variable that you can change. And also after it's clicked, we want to reset the data set. On this table download, we're going to get the name of your table. And on the row select, we're going to retrieve the row data. We're going to get the data set again. So make sure you have the same data set name. And then on current index, when it changes, every single time they click on a row, it changes. 
we're going to get the item data. This is just a variable from this data set one to get the current item. It grabs the current item and then we're able to get pieces of information from this one item. So the same item data dot title is what I labeled my column inside of the database is going to be the name. A name is just the variable that I'm going to be using inside of the URL. Then item data dot file file is the name of the column in my database where I actually stored the document. I'm going to call it file. And then the file is the actual document itself. I'm going to split it. I'm going to get the third position and this is what I'm going to call the URL. So all these are variables that I made up. You can use whatever names you want. Just make sure that you match them up in the correct place of the code. Then at the very end of the code is when we're going to send them Wix location to that exact URL that triggers the download. That's it. Now you know all the code. Let's dive into the editor so I can show you behind the scenes of what that actually looks like. Now here's my tutorial site. Here's the home page for the example. This is the table. The table is connected through the database icon with one data set that is connected to my documents collection. I have one. If I right click this table and select view properties, I can see the table name and the on row select. There was a little plus sign there, I turned it on, I clicked enter on my keyboard, and that's how I got that little piece of code at the bottom of the page. Now for the next one, this is a repeater. Here's one repeater. If you don't know how to use repeaters, go to the very bottom of the tutorial site, click on the repeater tutorial button link, it'll direct you to the correct video so you can learn how to work them. Uh, this one is connected through the database icon as well. And here are the two buttons that I was talking about. All you do is connect one of those buttons to the database through the data set. Make sure that the correct data set is selected up at the top and that the link connects to the file, which is your actual document inside of your database collection. The other button is not connected to anything. Make sure that none of these icons are green. What you can do is you can hide that one on the, underneath, put that one on top. This one, if you right click, view properties, does need to be triggered on click event because we will be triggering the code to do something after they click on it. This is just the name of the document. You can place it anywhere. This image is connected to a placeholder image that I selected for each of the test documents. And for the other repeater, it's the same thing. There is also two buttons. One is connected to the link. One is triggered on click to trigger the code at the bottom of the page. And the repeater is connected through the data set. I know, that was pretty easy. How long have we waited for this? <laughs> if you have any questions, please join the Facebook group. Look for Totally Codable. It is the Wix code community just for you. Chances are people have already asked your question and the answer is waiting for you in the group. We can help you. Yes, I do provide private tutorials. So if you have questions that you want answered, with my undivided attention, then you can find me here. Click on Code Queen so you can submit a request. Make sure you subscribe. Here's a little subscribe button up at the top corner of the tutorial site if you missed it on YouTube. Who knows, maybe on the next video notification you'll see a title that says, Preview Document with Hidden URL. Hmm? What do you think? <laughs> see you soon. Bye.